my dear friends and my dear subscribers at uh, this time i am here uh, for medical students and i have come with one another case presentation that is a parotid swelling this comes as a, a long case when you are appearing for your final exam, exam your examinations <clears throat> now i will to, in this to this day video i will tell you how you have to present your case to your examiner you might have seen many videos about the parotid swelling but in this video i will our, my main purpose is to tell you uh, what are the hit points that you should not miss while you are presenting the case of parotid swelling and how you exactly you are going to present the case so before uh, presenting case just i would like to tell you what are the few important points that should not you should know about should know about the parotid swelling and should not miss while you are presenting the case <clears throat> this is parotid this is the ear now uh, parotid what is exactly parotid means uh, para means around the around the otis means ear so this is the gland that is situated around the ear that's why it is called the parotid gland the parotid gland is situated uh, in front behind and below in front behind and below the your pinna so this is uh, the location of the parotid gland here this is i have shown shown is the mastoid bone and this is the uh, mandible this is the groove behind okay fine so this is the location of the parotid gland parotid gland is an exocrine gland it secretes a secretion through a duct that is called a stenson's duct or the parotid duct that opens uh, just next to the upper second molar tooth so this is the thing you have to remember then what other thing you have to remember is in parotid you must know about the facial nerve the facial nerve after emerging from the stylomastoid foramen it enters uh, into the parotid gland now this parotid gland has got two uh, lobes the superficial lobe and the deep lobe and the both the lobes the parotid gland is covered by the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia now this facial nerve this enters the parotid gland between these two lobe and inside so, so this is the parotid gland so inside the the, the parotid gland this uh, the from here enters the facial nerve now uh, in, in in the parotid gland it's just it gives the five branches one branch two branch third branch fourth branch and fifth branch this is temporal branch this is zygomatic branch this is buccal this is mandibular and this is cervical so you have to remember about the parotid you have to remember about the facial nerve and its branches where while present in the case you will have to say uh, demonstrate the functioning or proper functioning of the facial nerve by demonstrating the function of the various facial muscles then you have to remember one more thing that is the facio venous plane this facio venous plane is formed the facial nerve and a vein that is called a retromandibular nerve retromandibular vein that's formed by the joining of the temporal vein and the marginal vein so this is the facio venous venous plane that lies between the two lobes superficial and deep lobe of the parotid gland so uh, this is the basic thing that you should know about the parotid gland while you are present in the case now this parotid gland can present in what various ways it can present as a swelling present as a pain over the swelling present over the difficulty in chewing and present uh, uh, present uh, uh, with the uh, increased salivation or decrease salivation if if it is compressing the facial nerve then various uh, uh, sign and symptoms pertaining to the facial nerve that will be the chief complaint of the patient now here i am presenting one of the case the case goes like this so name of my patient is mahesh he is 32 year old male resident of delhi he is a uh, um, he, he is a engineer in the multinational company and uh, he he has come to this hospital with the chief complaint of swelling uh, around the right ear since last 4 months and mild pain over the swelling since last 2 month 
So my patient was apparently well four months back when he noticed a small swelling uh, around the right ear. When he noticed the swelling, it was a small size. He says it was of the size of uh, marble and gradually it had increased to the present size of uh, the tennis ball. There is no history of any sudden increase in size of the swelling. There is no history of any prodromous syndrome, uh, symptoms like uh, fever or uh, increased salivation or there is flu-like symptoms uh, the patient does not give a history of it there is, there is no history of uh, any um, ulceration over the swelling there is no history of any discharge from the swelling there is no history of any uh, redness of the skin over the swelling so these are the things that you have to tell uh, to say what type of the um, uh, swelling this peptide gland this can be a simple swelling the benign swelling or malignant swelling or, and what various effect it, it is causing whether it is compressing the facial nerve or it's not compressing the facial nerve the whole thing you have to cover there is uh, no history of any similar com uh, complaint on the uh, on the on other side there is no history of any uh, any uh, other lymph node uh, uh, and the, sorry there is no history of any swelling that that, uh, that that is present over the neck so this is how the chief complaint goes like uh, you can individually mention about the facial nerve there is no history of difficulty in uh, mastication there is no history of difficulty in blowing or closing eyes like this but we will examine the facial nerve separately at the end so this is the brief about the uh, swelling then patient complained of uh, mild pain over the swelling since last two months which is uh, um, dull aching in nature and the patient says that uh, the, the, at no time the, in the intensity uh, had been increased and the, 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 at no, and the patient uh, does not uh, took uh, any medication to get relief from the pain. So these are the two chief complaints that we have elaborated uh, thinking in view of. So might be this is uh, could be a mum. So we have taken the history of prodromous uh, syndromes and all. Uh, if, if the history is short but as in my case the history is long so it this more goes towards any benign or malignant swelling which we don't know uh, at present so this is how you present the history of present illness then you come to the past history the, there is uh, no history of uh, similar complaint in the past might be patient is having similar complaint in the past because of the mumps or something uh, that has been diagnosed there is no history of hypertension diabetes mellitus or tuberculosis and then you come to personal history the patient is is vegetarian he is a non smoker non alcoholic which is very important because if the oral hygiene of the patient is not good then it might uh, obstruct the stensions that that uh, uh, have repercussions over the parotid uh, gland so there is not he is not uh, alcoholic he is non smoker he is vegetarian he is non tobacco, tobacco chewer family history is nothing significant i come to general physical exemptions and my patient is 32 year old gentleman he is moderately built and nourished he is lying comfortably over the bed he is well oriented to time place and person uh, his uh, karnofsky status is 90 he is uh, very active beside he is having swelling no other complaint uh, he is having uh, then um, the, um, there is no pallor, cyanosis, jaundice, ectus or generalized lymph neuropathy. BP of my patient is 120 by 80 millimeters of mercury. Pulse is 72 per minute, felt on the right radial. It is, uh, uh, it is normal uh, uh, rhythm, normal volume. It is non-bonding, non-collapsing pulse. Uh, so this is how you have demonstrated the BP and pulse. There. Then CVS, S1, S2 is heard normally. Then RS, bilateral air it is normal. The CNS, the cranial examination if you have done. Uh, then it's okay or then here you can mention separately your exemption of the facial nerve the facial nerve basically we know these are the branches and there are few important nerves that we can test so while testing the facial nerve you can test for the orbicularis oculi by asking the patient to close his eyes tightly you try to open it so see how much tent is there then frontal belly of occipital frontalis ask the patient to frown like this say whether the uh, uh, ridges are coming or not then corrugated supercilli ask the patient to, to uh, make a fold of uh, the inner aspect uh, ask to, to bring it close like this okay so then you come to the uh, the vaccinator ask the patient to puff put a finger, finger and see what is the stand then ask the patient to do it like this see whether the masseter is involved or not then come to the uh, or, um, or orbicularis oris are the patient to whistle 
whether he is able to whistle or not. Then levator uh, anguli oris. Ask the patient to move his uh, lips like this. Uh, then ask the patient. This is a platysma, method, cervical method. Ask the patient to do like this. So whether all these activities are there or not, you can mention that how you have examined the facial nerve. Now you come to the examination part of the patient. Sir, I have taken concern of the patient. I have informed the patient what I am going to do. I have maintained the privacy of the patient. If it is a female patient, you say I have made sure that one female attendant is standing with me. Then I have explained the patient and exposed the patient up to uh, say clavicle. Then I have uh, examined the patient in the sitting position and I stood in front of the patient. On inspection, sir, I could see there is a swelling around uh, uh, say 6 into 8 centimeter which is uh, present below uh, in front and behind the right uh, ear the swelling uh, the margin of the swelling is uh, well made out and uh, mm, uh, the skin over the swelling is normal there is no scar mark or no redness no um, engorged veins or uh, nothing could be seen uh, that over the swelling then uh, uh, you come to the palpation. On palpation, you see he, the I could feel a swelling which is around six into eight centimeter. It is involving. Uh, it is it is extending. How much uh, from uh, the the pinna lower end of the pinna? It is extending to the six centimeters. The transversely, vertically, in both the, the the direction. You have to say what is the size of the swelling. You have to mention it like this. Then uh, the it is uh, uh, firm in consistency. Uh, it is firm. Then it is, uh, it is well defined, you can feel the outer inner and lower margin, upper margin definitely you won't be able to feel. Then skin over the swelling is pinchable, skin over the swelling is pinchable, this is sign of the benign uh, peripheral swelling. If it is not, then it goes more in favor of the malignancy swelling. So here the skin over the swelling will be pinchable to you. Then you see look for the mobility of the swelling, you hold the whole the swelling in your hand, try to move, move it in the transverse and the vertical vertical in the transfer direction see whether mobility is there or not so might be it is a cause restricted mobility you can see but the skin or the the swelling is free then um, there is no not much of a role of percussion and not much role of auscultation no bruise and all is hurt then you look for the enlargement of cervical lymph node you have to mention see all the level of cervical lymph node including uh, diagnostic this is submandibular submandibular then uh, upper jugular mirror jugular lower jugular then you come to the sclenic and the p pre laryngeal all this lymph node on the affected side and on non affected side you have to see so your examination goes about uh, you have to feel for the swelling how the swelling is how the skin over the swelling then you have examined uh, the cervical lymph node exam don't miss the cervical lymph node examination you know how to examine cervical lymph node so if any lymph node is enlarged you have to uh, including uh, pre auricular occipital all these superficial and deep uh, lymph nodes in the cervical region you have to very well uh, well palpate then uh, in, in a few of the candidates they mention the facial nerve examination at this level that you can do here also but if you have mentioned in the general physical examination but you should not miss the facial nerve examination so this is how you have to um, uh, present the case of uh, parotid uh, examination then uh, the examiner will, will tell you what is the, the diagnosis then sir I, uh, this is uh, the swelling which is present in the para aortic region so this is a uh, uh, parotid swelling and uh, most probably or mostly it is a benign swelling in benign it is a mixed parotid swelling because that is more more common okay, that is um, pleomorphic adenoma they say why it is a benign swelling because, because the facial nerve is not involved or the skin is not fixed all these things if the facial nerve is involved then it, it goes more in the favor of the malignant swelling then examiner examiner will order now what how you will proceed first i would like to sir first i would like to confirm my diagnosis i will do uh, the fnc from the area and see what type of the swelling uh, the patient is having so is there any role of incisional biopsy so there is no role of incisional biopsy in this case as it it can lead into the migration of the uh, if, if it's a malignant they can it can move uh, then um, what else in examination the routine basic blood examination and all um, i have to do then um, one more thing uh, i have uh, just left one more thing in the uh, palpation part you have to feel for the 
parotid duct and you have to feel the deep uh, gland uh, deeper lobe of the parotid gland so to feel for the parotid duct so you have wear the gloves then by manual palpation with one finger you you put inside uh, just in front of the upper second molar to uh, one finger from the outside like this you have to feel for the parotid duct because this parotid duct it uh, um, it runs over the masseter muscle and pierces the uh, the buccal vitreator to open it just uh, above or next to the upper second molar tooth then to feel for the deeper node one finger you have to put it over here just the mastoid and the uh, this um, uh, mandible ramus of the mandible between this lobe and another finger you put inside just close to the tonsillar fossa then you have to feel so one finger will come over here at the in front of the mastoid this groove other finger we put it inside in front of the tonsillar fossa then you feel for the deeper lobe and for uh, parotid duct uh, just one finger inside next to the upper second molar uh, one finger you roll over the masseter this, this these are the two examples you should not miss while you are doing the palpation part part so hope um then yeah, there, there will be a large discussion about the swelling and all what is benign or malignant this is a theoretical part i am not covering it here so um, i hope you all understand now how to, to present the case of uh, parotid swelling and what points you should not miss while you are presenting the case of parotid swelling because this is the one of the very common case that comes in your examination uh i i would once again request all of you to please subscribe my channel those who have not done it till now please subscribe my channel i will keep on coming with various cases that is asked in the surgery uh, in your examination and thanks for watching my video thank you thanks a lot